Thanks for joining us. Julie's off tonight. With the start of school just around the corner, that means school buses will soon be rolling again. But an investigation by Care 11 has found that state leaders still have not closed a loophole in the law that lets admitted child molesters drive those buses. An investigative reporter, A.J. Legault, is here with more on what he's uncovered. A.J. Hey, Randy, for two years now, we've been reporting on Minnesota's secret sex offenders, people who admit to molesting kids but are still able to pass background checks to be school bus drivers or scout leaders. Officials promise to fix it. But as you're about to see, they apparently put partisan politics ahead of protecting kids. You may remember back in May when Governor Dayton vetoed a pair of massive tax and budget bills. It led to the DFL governor and GOP controlled legislature engaging in some grade A finger pointing about just who deserved an F. Our governor was a failure. Uh, it was their failure. Which side owns the failure is up for debate, but who it fails is not. Buried in the killed legislation were provisions to keep admitted sex offenders like Glenn David Johnson from getting jobs as school bus drivers. Another provision would have expanded BCA background checks to show sex offenses previously kept secret. And they've come back, flown under the radar, and have struck again. Representative Matt Grossel has for two years tried to get bills passed to protect our kids. They were introduced after Care 11 investigates exposed how hundreds of sex offenders have been able to use secretive plea deals to shield their crimes from the public. Lawmakers watch those reports during hearings. So a man who admitted to sexually assaulting a young girl is legally allowed to drive them to school. It's because of so-called stays of adjudication, deals where defendants admit they're guilty, but a judge delays accepting the plea and agrees to drop the charges if they complete time on probation. That leaves admitted child molesters with a clean record. In effect, secret sex offenders. Both sides of the political aisle agreed something has to be done. I think that it is important that we take care of these um, background checks and that we make certain that we disqualify people who are unsafe. But here's where the games begin. Republican leaders trying to force the governor's hand on budget issues wrapped the sex offender background measures, plus others to protect senior citizens from abuse, into a giant 989-page spending bill that Governor Dayton had already promised to veto, which brings us back to all that finger pointing. This failure is their responsibility. Failure of this session, failure of these two major bills to be negotiated. And Minnesotans will be hurt because he chose politics over people. The result, Minnesota parents have yet another year of questioning. Just who is driving their kids to school? Well, Representative Grossel tells me he plans to reintroduce the no secret sex offenders bills for a third time next session. And just to be clear, this could have been a standalone bill by itself. If this was a standalone bill, it most likely would be law yep. right now and these background checks would be working as they're supposed to. All right. Thank you, AJ.